Good morning, everyone. Today uh, we're doing our affiliate spotlight, and we have J.R. Bone with Right Start Home Inspections. Um, this is our first home inspector uh, so far on our spotlights. We've uh, done banks, so this is going to be a little bit different. Uh, we'll try to make sure it's informative and everything. But uh, you know, <coughs> one of the first questions I, I've got for J.R. is, um, you know, you see a, a lot of uh, information out there. Uh, and you see ads talking about home inspections and so forth. Um, when somebody's looking for a good home inspector, uh, what are some key questions they need to ask them when they pick, pick the phone up? Because I know that when we're writing a contract, uh, everyone has the right to do a home inspection and we encourage it as realtors because that is that is the sure uh, way for you to know kind of what's going on in the house. But what are some questions that you think are crucial that people need to ask you when they pick up the phone and say, hey, JR, how much does it cost? All right. Well, first of all, uh, I mean, experience is important. Uh, I have 20 years experience in this business. Uh, it's, it's also important that they be licensed in the state. You know, the, there is licensing for home inspectors. And there are some people out there that'll tell you they'll do a home inspection and they may be a contractor or whatever, but you have to be licensed in this state to do a home inspection. So that's critical. That's a good question to ask. Give, ask their license number. Look them up uh, on the uh, uh, internet, you know, through the, through the licensing agencies. Uh, that I think that's real important. Also- uh, Now, are all the reports that home inspectors do, do they all look alike or? No, uh, they, uh, they don't. I mean, some people use uh, forms. Uh, we use uh, Home Gauge, which is uh, uh, it, it's an online thing. We go online and we have the program. Uh, I can do several different formats with that, but the, but the main thing that you know we do residential, so it's a residential format. And with that, everything that we inspect, your roof, uh, your foundation, your uh, exterior cladding doors and windows, all your appliances in the home, electrical, plumbing, heating, uh, uh, any other buildings, a garage, a carport, uh, the grounds, all those things will be in that report with photos. Are, are the reports easy to read? Yes, they're, they're easy to read. Uh, and in the, in, in the beginning of the report, it's, it, it's on the outside, it shows a picture of the home and the address, the inspector's name, who did the inspection, uh, his license number, uh, phone number to reach him. Uh, then there's an index of every area. In each area uh, that we mentioned there is included. Uh, and it goes, you know, one through 10 or 15, how many areas that we inspect. Uh, it, it'll give an identification of the item, you know, what kind of cladding you've got on the house, what kind of windows, if the, if the, the, the uh, name of the window, the type, the brand of the window is there, we'll do that. So it's pretty know, detailed. The, yeah, it is very detailed. So it has a lot of information that's there and of course there's a summary at the end uh, if you if we find a lot of things or just one or two things or whatever the summary at the end will tell you the specific things that we found in each area uh, that we felt need feel need to be addressed or that you need to know about and you can also go to that summary and a lot of people do that they'll just go straight to that summary and look at it and say okay here's my problems and that's okay but the, the report from uh, the first page to the end gives information about the house, uh, different things that maybe you, did, you didn't know. Uh, some people don't even know that they have a heat pump instead of gas heat, you right. know. And so even if it's working properly, you're not going to know that unless you go right to the, the heating section and, and look at that. Well, so specifics are there too. When uh, somebody gets a report from you, uh, I think there's a misconception that they think, well, I get a report and the report says everything's good. So they, they think that's a guarantee that this house is great. It's going to last forever. No, no, uh, no. And that, and that's the thing. And we encourage people to call, you know, even if you get a good report, which I don't know what a good report is. I mean, I guess that means nothing's wrong with your house, but we have a lot of first time buyers, they don't understand houses, period. You know, right. that's, I'm scared to death, I'm buying a house. So if there's problems there, call and talk to your inspector. Make sure that that person is approachable. I mean, we, we expect you to call us and say, I, I don't understand something about 
my report, you know, and we'll spend time to talk to you about it. If you'd like to meet, we can meet you to do that. Most people don't. We do have people that come to the house. I encourage that if you want, if you can be there, we'll always try to arrange a time uh, that works with your uh, job or whatever. You know, have a representative there. If you can't uh, be there, have a mom or a dad or a neighbor or whatever come. Uh, you're still going to get a report. It's going to tell everything, but they can say, well, you know what? He was really looking at such and such, you know, right, and, that, right. and that brings, gives a little light to it, but always call because we can make you, help you understand more about a problem. Or if there's something that you saw that we didn't put in a report, we didn't think it was important, right. you know, but you did. So, you know, those are all, there's some misconceptions sometimes call and talk. Uh, and make sure that, uh, you know, when you get an inspection uh, or an inspector, uh, that you know what they're going to do, uh, that, uh, uh, you, you know, what, what they're going to inspect, when they're going to be there, what the cost is, and what it includes. Uh, I don't do termite inspections, but I look for damage. You know? and, and cost is not the same for every house because it depends on square right. footage. Yeah, so. yeah. A house may have one furnace, one air conditioner, or it may have two, or it may have three. Uh, it may be a 3,000 square foot home, 4,000. It may be 1,500, 1,100 square feet. There's a difference in the amount of time and what we have to go through to do the inspection, and plus the research, uh, you know, goes into it too. We're gonna look right. at, you know, there may be a recall on your furnace. I'm gonna punch those numbers in, and and serial numbers and so forth and look for any problem. There may have been a recall and if that hadn't been done, uh, we need to maybe go back to the seller or go back to an HVAC guy and say, you know, okay. what needs to be done. Um, now, uh, sounds like you've got a lot of great information. Uh, what a lot of you guys may not know is I think JR, I don't remember if he mentioned or not, but JR has been doing this for about 20 years. Um, JR is also, been involved on the state level with yeah I was on the state board of home inspectors for six years uh, did I was president for a year uh, did uh, several other you know I was on committees and so forth in that group and I'm also I've been on the uh, Kentucky Real Estate Inspectors Association for on that board uh, and currently I'm president of that I was treasurer for ten for ten years but I'm president now of, of that uh, organization and we have about 150 inspectors as members and uh, that includes continuing education uh, which is you have to have uh, 24 hours of uh, or 28 hours actually of continuing education to renew your license and our organization provides 14 hours twice a year uh, for that and that's the other thing is that you know inspectors have to be uh, educated. I, I do more than my share right. uh, just because it's important to my business. It's important to my clients that I get, you know, all the latest information, know about all the latest things that are out there for testing and so forth. And, uh, and we get that through those organizations. Well, it sounds like there's an awful lot involved in it. And I think you've done a good job explaining a lot of these things. And obviously JR's got a lot of experience in it. Um, uh, there's, you know, Sandy and I were talking about Jr., which, uh, you know, Jr. is a, a pretty good fellow, and we like to kind of tease him a little bit and everything. But, you know, uh, several years ago when I used to have hair, people used to compare me to Jeff Foxworthy, and Jeff Foxworthy always said that everybody's got a sign. Well, Sandy and I have come up with a sign for Jr., <laughs> and this is Jr.'s sign for the day. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> so we want to thank everybody for viewing our spotlight and thank you JR for being a part of our board. Give me a call uh, 270-339-7079 or you can email me at jrbone59 at gmail.com. Thank you very much. See you later. Bye-bye.